Okay, so in the last video segment, I talked about concepts of poverty and how we measure poverty. And now let me go ahead and talk about inequality, which is a different kind of issue. Inequality is kind of related to the issue of relative poverty, um, but it could be even a situation where we're looking at inequality between people who are not considered poor, people who are at the median income, and people who have higher incomes. And one of the first things we want to talk about is inequality of what? Because people talk about inequality looking at at least three different things out there. And the three most common things that people look at are inequality of income, inequality of wealth, and inequality of consumption. So inequality of income, we're looking at typically households, but also sometimes we look at inequality of wage rates. So we could look at household income, or we could look at wage rates. And there are good reasons to favor one or the other. If we're looking at inequality of household income, then we're looking at something that closely corresponds to what people's consumption possibilities are, or their choices in life, what they could choose to do. The tricky thing here is that we know that households come in different sizes and different compositions. So it might be that we would end up looking at one household, which is, say, a single adult living by themselves, making $30,000 a year, and a second household, which is two adults working full-time and earning $50,000 a year, and they have three kids. And it seems pretty clear that the first household probably has higher uh, economic welfare than the second household, because the second household had to work harder to get that money, and it had more malice to feed, and that kind of thing out there. So, although this is the one that is most commonly cited in the statistics, economists actually somewhat favor looking at inequality of wages, because inequality of wages tells you more about how much someone is getting relative to what they're giving up. And it isn't so sensitive to the composition of the households, whether people are you know, married with children or single or whatever else out there. It's pretty clear that you know, someone who's making $15 an hour is better off than someone who's making $10 an hour. Um, so we really know what we're talking about there. So that's one thing that gets looked at. We also sometimes look at inequality of wealth. And the distinction here is income is how much money you make in a given year or in a given hour, say for instance. Wealth is how much stuff you own. And some issues here, essentially, we want to look at, we really should be looking at your net worth, uh, your wealth minus your debts. A lot of times people don't do that, they just look at wealth. Um, some issues are, so one, are we looking at net worth or not? Two, Wealth is all the things you own, and if we were really thinking about this properly, we wouldn't just look at your bank account and how many stocks you have in your portfolio or whatever else out there, the car you own, etc. We also, for most of us, our most important source of wealth is our human wealth. And essentially, when you're young, you have many years of labor still ahead of you, so your level of human wealth is pretty high. And if you have a higher level of education, it's even higher because you own some human capital. To really measure wealth properly, we would want to include that sort of thing. At the more tangible level also, we, if we were looking, say, even at just among retirees, we might see, for instance, two different retirees have different arrangements for their retirement. Some people have social security, some people might have a pension, some people might just have a stock of assets that they've built up and they don't have social security or a pension. It's pretty easy to ask someone, 
you know, how much do you have in your bank account and that kind of stuff. And people could probably give you a number, assuming they would be honest. Measuring what your social security benefits are worth or what your pension benefits are worth, we can do that using present discounted value methods, but that's actually pretty tricky. And probably if you asked most people, they would have no idea how to do that. So there's the issue of what we call a defined benefit pension wealth. Generally speaking, because when we measure wealth, we're only measuring sort of external financial wealth and we're not measuring human wealth, what we're going to see here is that wealth inequality is going to be greater than income inequality. Because essentially, for people who don't have a high level of income, almost all of their wealth is their human wealth, the value of their labor and what they're going to be able to earn with that labor over the course of their life. At a little bit higher level, you have your labor and plus some education. Um, and then, you know, it's only when we get to really high levels of wealth that people sort of start holding high levels of financial wealth out there. Um, the other thing to be wary of is that because we mostly look at people's external wealth, their financial wealth, wealth varies enormously over people's age distribution. So when people are young, they typically have very low levels of wealth. They have a high level of human wealth, but a low level of external wealth. And then as people get older, they build up you know, some ownership in a house, and they build up some money in their bank account and that sort of thing. And so their financial wealth uh, grows as they basically draw down their human wealth. And then when people are in retirement, they have very little human wealth left in terms of their earning power, but they have a high level potentially of financial wealth and or pension wealth that they have left. So wealth sort of changes in a way with the age distribution of the population, even if the underlying sort of levels of inequality in the population are not changing. So that makes looking at sort of wealth inequality potentially problematic. The sort of benefit of looking at wealth inequality is if you sort of want to measure something like power, instead of people's ability to enjoy themselves, then maybe wealth inequality is the one you want to look at. Last, some people argue that we should look at consumption inequality. So here we would be comparing consumption of real goods and services across people. And you can see how if we sort of want to measure people's economic welfare, this is potentially the most attractive thing to look at. Um, potentially, what we would see here is that consumption inequality would be lower than income inequality for two different reasons. First, lower income people spend a larger fraction of their income, consume a larger fraction of their income than higher income people. So that's going to sort of blunt the inequality we see in income. Second, if we were sort of really doing this properly, we would include various, various kinds of what we call benefits in kind. So for instance, people get something like Medicare or Medicaid, and that raises their consumption. They can now consume medical services, even though they didn't actually receive that as income. And to a lesser extent, there are other forms of you know, government assistance and that kind of thing. So generally speaking, um, consumption inequality is going to be lower than income inequality. And you know, these two things, they measure interesting things, and they measure important things. But they're harder to measure, and there's a little bit sort of like people who really want to make inequality look as big as possible are going to look at wealth inequality. People who want to make inequality look as small as possible are going to want to measure consumption inequality. And sort of from a sort of minimal spin zone, um, income inequality is probably the one that's sort of the least spun in some particular direction out there. And again, in particular, economists favor looking at wage rates, inequality in you know, how much you make per hour as the best way to look at things because it's not affected by household composition as much.